Hey Stoners, welcome to another edition of Sticks and Stones. I am your host, Brent Elrod, coming to you from the cozy confines here on the patio at the No Shoes Bar and Grill, deep in the heart of the Republic of Texas. I have a wonderful pairing lined up for today. I'm pairing the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos number no. two with Balnellan Caribbean Rum Cask Single Malt Scotch. I'm really looking forward to these two, so let's pop the cork, cut the stick, and get to toasting. Now, the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos originally came out in 1976, but as those of you that are old like me might remember, there was a little bit of rumbling going on in Central America back during that time by a group of people called the Sandinistas, and the Fuentes pretty much ended up losing everything. So the Don Carlos didn't reappear until the mid to late 80s, but it has pretty much been a staple ever since. Now, this is a torpedo, six by 55 on the ring gauge. The filler and binder are both Dominican Republic, and the wrapper is a beautiful Cameroon leaf. Now, visually, it's a medium brown, uh, minimal veining, invisible seams, and just a hint of tooth. Now on the nose, I get uh, cedar, leather, a touch of earthiness, and also a hint of aged tobacco. Now let's give it a cut and test out the cold draw. Now on the cold draw, it's, it's got a, a very easy draw to it, uh, but I'm getting almost totally kind of a raisiny sweetness. Maybe just a hint of something along the lines of cinnamon, kind of as an undertone. It's a really great stick. Now, you may not be familiar with Balnellan. Uh, it is distilled by Angus Dundee Distilleries, which is more of a small craft distillery, so not really in the mainstream of uh, scotch drinking. It is bottled by Alistair Forfair, and it is a Speyside single malt. It's aged in ex-bourbon barrels and then finished aged in rum barrels. It is a non-age statement that is 46% alcohol by volume, 92 proof. So let's go ahead and pop the cork on the Bownell and rum cask and see what it has to offer us. Now that has a very, very beautiful light gold color to it. Probably a little lighter than what you would expect out of a scotch, but uh, I think being from Speyside, it's probably about normal, uh, especially for a smaller craft uh, distillery. Now on the nose, I do get uh, fruit. Uh, something along the ni uh, lines of uh, banana, maybe some pineapple, a little coconut, and there's kind of a creaminess or a butteriness to it on the nose. On the palate, a 
right away you pick up a sweetness or a creaminess along the sides of your tongue. Uh, not a lot of smoke. Uh, really no peat at all. Uh, you, can, you can really tell that it is a space side. I pick up uh, notes of vanilla, oak, and uh, there's some undertones of fruit, but it does have a little bit of heat to it. It is a 92 proof. Let's go ahead and toast our stick and see how these two go together. On the light, I pick up um, I pick up some cinnamon, maybe some coffee, uh, leather. There is some earthiness to it. And there is a little bit of sweetness coming off this Cameroon wrapper. I think those blend pretty well together. I will say that the uh, the Don Carlos is, when I did the cold draw, it seemed to have a fairly easy draw, but now that it's lit, it does feel a little tight. I am having to kind of work with it a little bit on the draw, uh, but it does have a really great volume of smoke. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn this down to about the halfway mark, and I'll come back and give you an update. Hey, stoners. I'm back. Uh, not quite to the halfway mark, but we're getting close. Uh, I wanted to come back a little bit early and kind of give you an update. Uh, I have uh, I've lost a little bit of my zeal for this particular pairing for several different reasons. Uh, we're going to go ahead and burn them out, see uh, see what we have in the end. But I did want to come in and kind of give you some of the things that I was noticing. Uh, number one, you may remember on the light, I told you that I was having a little more trouble with the draw than I was on the cold draw. So I got to kind of feeling on the stick. It felt really nice up here into the body. But when I got back next to the tip, I noticed that it was hard as a rock. So I took my C-Car V-Cutter and I recut it. And it did pretty well for a few minutes, maybe five or 10 minutes. Uh, and it started getting a little tough again. Uh, and I've also noticed, as you can see, that there has been just a little bit of splitting on that Cameroon wrapper. Uh, not exactly the quality standards I expect from Arturo Fuente. You know I love Fuentes. Uh, and I even also noticed very minor detail that the uh, wrapper is not even uh, where the two ends come together. It's a little offset, which uh, you would think quality control would uh, catch that. 
Uh, it's been a fairly pleasurable smoke though. Now, the Balnellan has got a, a harshness to it that I can't quite pinpoint, but I don't really like it. Uh, it has some, some, some good flavors in the profile, but on the finish, there's, there's just kind of a harshness there that, you know, you are dealing with a uh, smaller, less well-known scotch that's a little less expensive. And uh, I think you're kind of getting what you pay for on this particular offering. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to work on these two and I will come back and give you my final thoughts. I just thought I would take a few moments while I'm working on the uh, Don Carlos and the Balnellan to uh, give some of my thoughts on the current political and global climate going on right now. Not something I normally get into, but I have seriously thought about uh, maybe branching out and doing a little more political commentary because um, people that know me know that I am not a Democrat, I am not a Republican, I am a registered Libertarian, and I will, while I side generally more with Republicans than Democrats, I will bash both equally when it's deserved. And I have to say right now that well, I can't put it any other way. Our current president sucks. He does. I think he is, uh, his mental capacity has, I don't think it was very good when he was running for president, and I think it has only gotten worse since he's been in office. We have inflation at uh, levels that we haven't seen since the 1970s. Jimmy Carter had the uh, title of worst president in the U.S. and he is happy right now because he has now lost that title to Joe Biden. Uh, our border is completely open. Our border patrol is fighting tooth and nail trying to do their jobs and they are not getting the support they need from the administration. All they can think about is climate change, and diversity. We don't need to worry about climate change and diversity if the country goes to hell in a handbasket. You know, farmers are paying $900 a ton right now for fertilizer. To fertilize the crops that grow the food that we put in our bellies. A year ago, they were paying less than $250 a ton for that same fertilizer. Prices are going up. Gas is $4 a gallon. A year and a half ago, it was less than $2 a gallon. That's the kind of things that drive a country to collapse. You cannot continue to print money without having something to physically back it up like gold or silver and that money not lose value, which means if the money loses value, costs go up. If you have inflation of 8% and you get a 4% raise, that means that your money now buys 4% less than it did a year ago. So you ended up basically breaking even, even though you got a raise. Those are the kinds of things that we're having to deal with right now. Elections have consequences. Your pet projects, your pet issue is not worth losing the country over. That's my two cents. I will have more later, but there's a primer on where sticks and stones falls on the political spectrum. Hey, stoners, I am back. We are 
not down to the band. But the glass is empty. Uh, pardon me. This pairing has not gone as expected. Uh, could possibly be the worst pairing I've ever done. And uh, <clears throat> that's embarrassing, especially when you're talking about a premium brand like Arturo Fuente. But this stick has basically just exploded. Uh, it hasn't burned evenly for the entire stick, as you can tell. Uh, most of the wrapper has peeled away. Uh, and quite honestly, the Bownellen wasn't very good. Um, there's no other way I can put it. Um, so I just decided to uh, go ahead and give up on this one and uh, reset for next week. So I would give the Bownellen. I'd give it a 3.0 out of 5, and quite honestly, I think that's being generous. Generous. It was very harsh. Uh, after the first couple of sips, it was just a harsh, harsh spirit. Um, I would expect it to be much smoother. It's probably why they don't put an age statement on it. They just say it was aged. Uh, it probably needs to be aged a little longer, my opinion. Uh, I'm very, very disappointed in the Don Carlos. I have heard so many great things about this particular cigar that I really expected this, even if the spirit wasn't quite up to snuff, I expected this to carry the day. And it just didn't do it. There were too many quality control problems with the, not only has the wrapper split away, but now the binder is even starting to split as well. Uh, it, has, it has waffled back and forth between a very easy draw and a very hard draw. Um, but uh, the flavor profile was still right on point. It was just there were so many problems, I couldn't get over it. Uh, I would give the number two uh, a 4.25 out of five and that's some of those points are specifically because it's it's a fuente um, you know could just be this particular stick on this particular day uh, maybe the roller was having a bad day I don't know um, but I will definitely try the fuente Don Carlos number two again I will probably not be trying Balnellan again. So, be sure to hit like, subscribe, share, notify, all those things, and now it's gone out, uh, so that you can keep track of when the latest episodes drop. I will have more great pairings coming in the future. Uh, I, now that the weather is lovely, I will be here at the patio at the No Shoes Bar and Grill on a weekly basis. Um, be sure to go by the Sticks and Stones store to get some great Sticks and Stones gear like this beautiful, beautiful embroidered polo that comes in a wide variety of colors. I can't even tell you what the number is, somewhere around eight or ten different colors. Uh, and it's embroidered. You can find it right here or at sticks-in-stones, S-T-O-N-E-Z, the number one, dot myshopify.com. Be sure to hit me up on one of my many different social media platforms. You can find all of that at the end of this video. I'm on Getter, I'm on Rumble, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook. Uh, be sure to look me up, give me some comments, give me 
some suggestions on what you would like to see. I would really appreciate that. So, until next time, keep your sticks dry and your stones cold and have a great day.